Hey, what's up sports fans? Chaz here. We are at the Red Bull headquarters in Santa Monica and today we are gonna hang out with the Williams brothers. Justin Williams of Legion of Los Angeles and Corey Williams, newly of the Miami Blazers. We're gonna check in with them and see what wheels and tires they're gonna race for the 2024 season. We're gonna see what makes them faster. We're Red Bull, and you know what that means. Oh, man, What's up, right my boy? Justin Williams. What's good? What's, What's going up? on today? Chilling, going out for a little ride. Nothing crazy. A little hour and a half. You say nothing Vanderbilt. crazy, but you got this man standing next to you, so it may get a little he got, crazy. He got the fat tires you know, on. I'm ready. ready to get I'm ready. Get the fat tires on, so I, that's gonna slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that that type of ride? It always turns into that type of ride, but it's not supposed to be that type of ride. So we're gonna keep Corey off the front. We're gonna keep Andrew off the front. So you don't make Dante mad you again. If you do a sprint, everybody, everybody follows. Oh, Every we time, on? It's like, I hear the shifters like. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop him, drop him, drop him. You, you gonna make Dante ride the front the whole time? Nah, 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 nah. We're gonna ride, we don't wanna go that slow. <laughs> Ooh, you didn't hear it at first. My oh, man, what's good? What's up? Hanging out. I want to ask you so many questions about the upcoming season, but I think the most important thing is what is up with these kicks, dude? I have never seen cycling shoes that look like that. Hey, man, you know, I had a, a custom painter, you know, hook me up with some uh, cool paint job. It is fly. All right, second big question. What's up with this? New team. What's good? New team, man, you know. I got to get me a national champion jersey. This one is uh, out of out of date, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you got to re-up. got to keep it fresh. Got to re-up. Got to keep it fresh. But, yeah, new team. Uh, super excited about the new opportunities. All right, once we're cruising, I'm gonna ask you a little about the bike because this is a new bike for you, right? Mm -hmm. Same wheels, uh huh. Same you wheels. Stay true. Say, I stay true. But well, you know, I need me some A5As. So. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna talk to a guy about that. But right now, we're about to leave on this ride. Yeah. Right, yelling at us. All right, I'll catch you out there. Thanks, my dude. I look intimidating right now. I'm ready. I'm ready for a race start. Wait, what? I heard this was a group ride, but someone said they're gonna. This, I'm trying to get the whole shot. <laughs> All right, here we are with the Williams brothers, Justin Accord. What is good, my guys? What's up? What's up? What's chilling for 2024? What's some? What's up? What's some big changes on the horizon? Big dreams? Wow. A lot of excitement as far as like what we're doing with the team and what we're trying to accomplish as a as a company and as a unit. I continue to elevate the sport, creating some uh, friendly competition amongst uh, amongst brothers. Friendly. Ooh. We'll see about that. Corey's been on Legion since the inception. Now you moved over to Miami Blazers. Yeah. What's that going to be like racing brother to brother? You know. Fun. Yeah, our whole <laughs> lives we've grown up competing against each other, so it's not going to be anything new. Yeah, it's not going to be new, and I think it's going to be exciting just because, like, Corey has a different style, and I have a different style, and so uh, of, like, leadership and of, like, how kind of how we race. And so we're going to be able to really put that to the test with the teams that we built around each other. we got a lot of the best guys and girls in the country. You do. Let's talk about the wheels you're on really quick. Corey, you're on the 404 Firecrest, and Justin, you're on the 454 NSW. Mm -hmm. These are both top-tier zip wheels. What's the difference? That's a good question. You know, I, I, I kind of feel like a there's a little bit of a difference. There is what a difference. feels different from a racer standpoint? Someone that spent the hours on the saddle, your butts are finely tuned to feel the difference. What's good? <laughs> I true. feel like the the 404s are a little bit more stiff than the 454s. I, I agree mm -hmm. with that. But also the 454s handle a lot better in the wind. So. I agree. Definitely. I agree with definitely. It, yeah. And what makes you make that choice in terms of like a racer if you're going to do a crit on a 454 or a 404? I think it just depends on the course and what you're trying to get out of it. I think having both wheels is like it's a, the best case scenario. Obviously, like you can't if you can't afford both wheels, you got to figure out what kind of racing you're going to do. 404 for criteriums, I think you'll get like a, little, a bit more consistency out of the racing. And yeah. I think the 454 for road racing and for longer rides comes in a lot, a really handy for me. I can meet our race criteriums. Well, one reason, because look at who I'd have to race against. Look see, at, uh, oh. what had happened was, uh, oh. I just don't want to race against these dudes. Are you interested, though? Uh, no, because I don't want to get beat. <laughs> <laughs> On some real talk though, what kind of what kind of peak numbers are you putting out when you're hitting the sprint watt wise? Sprint, uh, it just depends. When you're actually racing, yeah, uh, the, the peak watts are going to be a bit lower, and it's more about your like five and ten second watts. Like from a standstill, I can do maybe two thousand watts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, me too. No totally, deal. totally, I got that. No big deal. <laughs> you're hundred meters out, like yeah. five hundred meters out. In the, race. The watt, in the race, do the watt numbers change? Oh, yeah. Like, when do you hit peak? How long are you are you peaking for? Yeah, so I'm always yeah, trying. You usually peak yeah. in the snap, so like maybe your third, fourth, fifth pedal stroke, stroke mm -hmm. is where you're gonna get that peak, uh, and then it's gonna drop kind of, 
and then it's gonna like plateau, and then you should plateau. In a race, if we have, if I have a good lead out, I'll probably peak at like 15 or 1600 watts. Yeah. And then I'll probably drop down to 13 or 1400 watts for that 10 seconds. But so much of it is not about the watts, it's about the positioning I and think, putting yourself there. Like, I what do you think? I honestly think none of it is about the peak watts. Okay. If you can do great watts, if you can do like decent watts, like Corey wins races off of 1200 watts. That's wild. And there's there's fools that are easily able to dump 15, yeah. 1600 and he's 100%. still smoking them. It's like a pretty common number. It's more about, you know, reps. It's about your form. Come, it's like understanding the body mechanics of like, once you get up to speed, wanting to drop down and get out the wind. Yeah. It's about positioning and it's about knowing how to take runs. And knowing how to take runs is probably the one thing that I don't see even in big races. What does that mean though? So like as someone who doesn't really understand a lot about the, the details of it, what does it mean to take a run in a Criterion race? So taking a run is basically like giving the guy in front of you or the person in front of you some space, not a ton of space, two, three bike lengths. Yeah. And then timing it so you run into the draft and then you hit, you get into the draft, you have a bunch of, you carry a bunch of momentum and then you want to time it with where you want to go from, where you want to reach max speed at and then where the finish line is. And this is all at 30 plus miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. You're talking about doing a lot of math right now in your head. But well, these are all like basically split second decisions. Practice makes perfect. Practice makes 10,000 hours, right? 10,000 hours. So Corey, you just, we just dropped the whole group, right? I really didn't. You know, I was third up the climb, but I'll take that. All right, I feel you. Okay, could you run me down what you're riding this year with the Miami Blazers? What's good? So I'm on the Arrow Road. Uh, super, super aero bike, uh, super stiff, super fast. Components wise, uh, what are you running? What do you got going on shifting? So I'm on a uh, tram red. I have a 52 front ring one Ooh, by. Just a one by? Just a one by. Why one by? What's up with that? You know, if I need the inside ring, I'm going too slow. <laughs> <laughs> for the crits, right? Yeah, exactly. Even for some of the road races, right? Uh, we got a 3310 back here, and then I'm on the, the 404s. So tire size wise, you've been racing for, you know, multiple decades. What size tire did you start racing on? Uh, I started racing on, I think they had a 21.5. I was on 21.5 with 120 PSI in the Wild TVs. style. So what do you got going on now? Uh, I'm on 28s now. Everything with us is about turning, right? So like the more comfortable you are in turns, the better you're going to perform, you know? All right, sick. Thanks for giving me the rundown. Corey Williams with Miami Blazers. Thanks, Thank my you. dude. All right, my dude. New bike, 2024. New bike yeah. What is Legion? Is this just Legion or is this just you? This is Legion. This is Legion, so. Yeah, new bike, 2024. What's going on? Ram. Walk me through it, man. Genuinely feel like I can win a lot of races on it. When you yeah. jump on a bike and you're like, oh yeah, like, we're gonna win a lot Makes of races. Makes you feel fast. Makes you feel fast. I went up to a 54. The bike's so fast, I was like, oh man, like I was riding a 52. I was like, you know what? Let's go to the 54, the bikes feel fast enough. I, I really want to touch on, people think that the big chain ring is just so you have a big sprint gear, but I, the professionals always tell me it's more about position in the cassette. Yeah, well, can you walk me through that? Okay, so you want a bigger gear, uh, gear in the front more for a few reasons. Like, I'm sprinting like 14, 13. Uh, it's just better chain alignment, so it's like less cross chain when uh -huh. you're sprinting one. Two, it's more efficient because the chain is like, it's less tight as you're, as it's going through your uh, the the cogs. all of the pulleys and everything yeah right the pulleys because so, if you're all so, the way down it it sucks deep it's like a tighter so like look at how big that that circle is here mm -hmm. when you're lower it's a tighter uh, circle and so ah. that that creates less efficiency so that's the kind of stuff that we're thinking about especially those one percent as we start to get into yeah. race season you got these guys on how they feel walk me through the wheel setup as of right now four five uh, four five fours I really love these wheels I've grown to love these wheels a lot on the Pirelli uh, P0s. They're great, like they roll, the rolling resistance is fantastic. Uh, the wheel handles like really good, decent stiffness. Yeah, it's just like a good all around wheel. We use it for everything. And because we're traveling so much, it's like our trusty, dusty, like can do everything, climb, sprints, does everything well. When you run tubeless, do you feel like it affects the handling of the bike? Yeah, no, tubeless are, tubeless are great, especially for traveling. Like it's like, you, it, it gives you a sense of security. Like when you're riding and you're racing when we're on the road, uh, if, if anything goes wrong, if you get a, if something goes in the tire, like as long as it's like pretty small, it won't affect what you're doing. There's a lot of pluses to it. I feel like in a straight line, there is, like it rolls really fast. Again, momentum. It, the momentum, it feels, it almost feels like it's a, like a, it feels like you're on like a cloud. I was thinking that in my head and like the way I said, well, like it's saying it out loud, but it kind of just feels like it carries really well. So I do like tubular for those. Straight line, fantastic. It was really great. 
Uh, and then the tire pressure selections and stuff. It's like, you can create when I was younger, we would uh, run higher tire pressures, like 120 right? 120 PSI, like 120. Like dude, I ran 140 when I was a kid, <laughs> crazy, on like 21 tires. Yeah. On these tires, and like the gaps were bigger, right? So you'd go one, like 120, 110, 190 yeah. was the range. Dude, the range with these tires is so much more fine. So you can feel the difference between like three, four PSI. Wow, almost like cyclocross style. Right? Exactly, so now I have like this little digital reader that shows, okay, like maybe I wanna run like 63 in the front, yeah. maybe 65 in the back. Like those little details are so much more important and you can really fine tune like how you want to either corner, depending on the course, if you want it to be a little bit harder cause you're, it's like, it's more straight away, like four corner, pretty simple. You could really start to play around with that and Tubeless has made that possible. One last question. What's that mean? What's up with 10? 10, this is this uh, undefeated uh, 10, uh, 10 national championship. It's 12 now, but I like the, I like the 10. It looks 10. good, it yes. looks good. Thanks, my dude. All right, so we just got done hanging out at the Red Bull Center with uh, Corey of the Miami Blazers. I almost said Legion, but of the Miami oh, yeah, Blazers. Look at the jerseys, because you know right this, there, boom. You know, we ain't got new jerseys yet, you know what I mean? It's gonna happen though. So thank you, Corey, for walking me through. Make sure to follow the Blazers. Make sure to follow Corey. Make sure to like and subscribe. But for now, this is Corey and Chaz making you faster. Boom. Oh.